Hello everyone. As I promised you yesterday, I was going to make a video on uh, the proper way to extract cubed roots without a calculator. You know, we live in a country where, uh, and I think it's the same in uh, nowadays in all Western countries, but I speak specifically of the United States. And we're living in a country where calculators reign and curiosity is quietly euthanized. I saw the other day a, a report, uh, a teacher had quit one of her schools because she said that the new generation uh, has uh, utterly, they, they're just not curious about anything really, they don't care. And uh, I'm not gonna get into this video the uh, about the parenting and all that because I think you already know my views on that. But it is very telling that so many teachers are quitting because of the lack of curiosity uh, in so many young people. Now, I'm not saying that it that the young people are to blame. I'm not one of those people. I don't go around blaming only the young people. There's a lot of blame uh, to share, but uh, it, it should be equally shared amongst the generations. But today, we're going to examine uh, mathematical maneuvers so utterly forgotten that most modern students would sooner spot Bigfoot on campus then recognize it. Uh, in fact, many of you yesterday uh, recognized in the comments in the video before this one, by the way, a lot of you had good answers in there and I, I've acknowledged some of you. Thank you for participating in that. Uh, but many of you uh, in fact recognize that many students today who are at the calculus level, in fact, I had a, a student yesterday, you wrote to me, I don't know your name. Uh, you said, I'm in a calculus course and uh, I don't know how to do these problems. So why the heck are you in a, in a calculus course? You should be back in arithmetic. They've overqualified you and they've condemned you to a life of unemployment. And you're spending, you're probably spending thousands of dollars in the process, hundreds of thousands of dollars, perhaps, depending on what uh, the name of your school. But I'm speaking, of course, of cubic, uh, cubed roots in this uh, video. And it was a, a really a beautiful thing that was once taught to students with nothing more than a stub of chalk and the will to think. But alas, today's uh, pupils, you're armed with a lot of you have glowing screens all day and math helper apps and you're allowed to give uh, lifeless calculator decimal answers to these problems rather than uh, the beginning of uh, a grand uh, algebraic journey. You really need to sharpen your minds once again and make them sharper than the blades at Normandy. Because many of many schools and many uh, institutions have traded proofs for punchlines and process for plugins and thinking for tapping. Well, not here, not in this classroom, not in this, not on this channel, not at City Tutoring. And today, most of you, you can tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. But I doubt it because I'm usually 100% correct about these matters, and you know it. Most students, you encounter cute roots maybe once in passing, sort of like a, maybe in, a, in, in some kind of a stupid PowerPoint presentation that your teachers use or something. But you're told to basically press buttons, and the mystery ends there. And you're told that, uh, but you know, you're told that you can always use Wolfram or ChatGPT. By the way, ChatGPT won't, won't help you. In the, I've, I've already mentioned that in the majority of cases. And if you are using ChatGPT, if you dare use ChatGPT in my class, uh, you are a fool. But that's not, because that's not mathematics. That is obedience disguised as knowledge. And you may say, oh, but I have a calculator. You think you're so smart. Do you really believe that? So did the Romans, by the way. The Romans had a calculator. They called it an abacus. But an abacus and a calculator has never written a proof. And it has never taught a soul to think. So you better stop with the slouching. Uh, it's uh, You have a lot of technological, you have a lot of dependence on tech. You got to dust off your prime factorizations. You got to take up arms in the, uh, as we'll see today, with cube roots. There are three cases with cube roots that we can look at. And you need to behold mathematics, not as an answer, but, uh, although it is in many cases, but as a discipline. So I hope that the video today is uh, useful to your needs and that you see that you do not need a calculator for any of the problems that I gave you. All right. So how to extract the square root without a calculator, right? Because if you're a serious math student, you should not be using a calculator at all. Um, 
So the first case that we can look at, and I want you to take notes if you're interested in this, case one. And that is when both terms are perfect cubes. If both terms, what I mean by term is, in this case, it's a rational expression, the numerator and the denominator. Uh, you have a numerator and denominator. If both of those numbers are perfect cubes, you could take the cube root of each. And that's pretty straightforward, right? So you're left with A over B. Uh, and why is that? Because, well, remember that from the rules. Let me see if I can draw it here. Uh, if you have A over B to the third, remember that you exponentiate both, right? So this becomes A to the third over B to the third. And if you wanted a, uh, a numerical example of that, um, well, let's think of perfect cues, right? Now, back in the day, they used to make you memorize at least, you know, 50 of them. Uh, but let's think of some perfect cubes that we can use for this example. Well, I know that uh, let's see, 343, we can use 343, the cube root of that. 343 over uh, another perfect cube would be 729. Well, in this case, both the numerator and the denominator are perfect cubes. So that means we could take the cube, uh, the cube root of each. That's cube root of 343 divided by the cube root of 729. The cubed root of 343 is actually 7. 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. So that's 7 right there. The cube root of 729 is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. 81 times 9 is going to give you 729. So therefore, you have 7 over 9. Done. So that's the easiest. That's the most straightforward case. The uh, Now we're going to look at the second case uh, where it's slightly different. The second case is when only the denominator is a perfect cube. If that is the case, then you can extract the entire root of the numerator and then divide it by the exact root of the denominator. And I put, a little, I put the, uh, the structure here on the board. And why is that? Well, you can do a little proof here. If the cubed root of A uh, by substitution, let's call it N, and then if n over b is the cube root of a over b, we have what we call an approximation. Now, what I mean by approximation here, now you got to remember that this is without a calculator. So uh, what I am referring to is the, uh, the, the closest perfect cube that, that is possible uh, that you can use. So uh, I did a little proof here n cubed is less than a, which is less than n plus i, that arbitrary sort of, well, perfect cube to the third. And then I have a little breakdown here. It'll make more sense to some of you if we use, um, if we use numbers, right? But basically what I'm getting at with this is that let's say you had, I don't know, the, 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 let's say the numerator is not a perfect cube, right? So let's say the cube root of 37 over 125. 125 is certainly a perfect cube. Uh, so what we do is we take the, the root of the numerator here, in this case, the cube root of 37. And we already know that the denominator in this case, we should know that 125 is a perfect cube. So that that's really five. So now we have the cube root of 37 over five. But since the since the root of 37, the cube root of 37 is not going to be exact, but the closest that we can use is three, right? So an approximation would be because three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. So that comes close enough to 37. So we could use three as an approximation. And now we have three fifths. So that would be, uh, and of course, we would have to specify this three fifths uh, in less than in less than, we're talking about i, we used i uh, earlier as that approximation, i over 5. So that's one way to uh, to approach uh, these more, th these messier ones. All right, now we have the third case. And now you should be having a case 3. And of course, as, as should be obvious to you, you should have guessed, Case three is when neither the numerator nor the denominator are perfect cubes. And what do you do? You make the denominator a perfect cube. 
It's a form of rationalizing the denominator, by the way. Uh, and a lot of, I, I know some schools still teach uh, rationalizing the denominator, but not, not as deep as they should. As they should. Uh, I just had a student yesterday. He's an honor student. He does very well. He actually did very well on his PSAT. He has no idea how to rationalize denominators properly. It's sad. And he had the highest PSAT score, by the way, in his class. But how do you do this? Well, you multiply both terms, in this case, by the square of the denominator. And then what happens when you do that is it actually re it reduces to back to case two that we talked about just now, right? So in this case, I put here in less, in less than I, I'm talking about that perfect cube, the closest that you can get. R in this case represents uh, the root of the cube root of AB squared. Um, so if, if you wanted a uh, numerical example, we could do that. Um, I guess we could use, uh, let's see, uh, well, the cube root of 37, let's say, over the uh, over 504, as you can see here, neither of these are a uh, perfect cube, but you can all you can then do the cube root of 37 and then we're going to multiply the 37 by the square of the denominator so 37 times 504 squared divided by 504 and then if we square that right it's you already have an exponent here of one so it's really 504 to the third 504 to the third all right, I want you to pause the video. I want you to multiply this uh, this 37 times 504 squared. I want you to multiply it by hand, not a calculator. And when you have that, let, uh, let me know. I'm going to do it on paper as well. But you should pause the video. All right, so this is what you should have. Now, of course, the numerator here is 209, but that's an approximation. That's why I put here less than I, right? That approximation over uh, 504. Remember, this is important because you're not really, uh, since you don't have a calculator, you need to come up with the closest uh, perfect cubed approximation. So that gives you 209 is the closest you will get to uh, 9,398,592. Now, a different approach to this, by the way, is if you think about this as fact, if you factor this out, the original number, the 37, if you think about it that way, you have the cubed root of 37 and it was over 504. Now this can be written, the 504 can be written as a, a product of certain factors, right? So you could actually do, um, and I'm sorry, I, I didn't mention it earlier. I, I should have seen that before, but before I did all the multiplication, but basically you can break it up into factors to rationalize. It's a form of rationalizing the denominator. So you could do two to the third. If you do two to the third times three squared times the seven, well, 2 to the 3rd is 8. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 8 is 72. And then 72 times 7 will give you the 504. But then if you rationalize this properly, you have the cubed root. And you take the 37 multiplied by 3 and also by the 7 squared. I don't like my, my 3 there. looks sloppy. And then on the, in the denominator here, if you rationalize it, then of course this becomes two to the third times three uh, to the third times seven to the third. And of course that would, the cubed root of that would give you 42. So then you would have the cubed root of uh, 5,487 
over 42. Right? Remember that this these exponents divide by this, which is the index. So you get 2 times 3, which is 6. 6 times 7, 42. That's a, a different approach that you could uh, that you could use. And now what I'll do is I'll solve the problem that you were asking me about. A lot of you were asking about the one uh, number six yesterday with the one with the uh, the radical expression. All right. So to solve this problem in the uh, from the previous video, a lot of you were curious about this problem. A lot of you got it right, by the way. So that's a, that's encouraging. Uh, what you got to do is you're still following uh, the order of operations, but. Uh, you you should realize here, if you notice, one plus a third, and then you have one minus one fifth. You have that both in the uh, numerator uh, and the denominator, right? So we should simplify those parts first to make it easier on ourselves. Well, we have one plus one third. That should give you four thirds. I'm going to put it here on the side here. So, and then one minus one fifth, that should give you four fifths. And we're multiplying, so already we have uh, a simplified version here. So we could do two times four thirds. Divided by four fifths. And when you are, I should put the radical here. When you divide fractions, I hope you remember this. When you divide fractions, you multiply it by the reciprocal, right? So this becomes um, 20 over 12. So now you have two times radical 20 over 12 in the numerator. And this 20 over 12, of, co of course, reduces to uh, five thirds. So you have two times square root of five over three. That's the numerator. Then you do the same thing with the denominator. You have five times. And then since we're multiplying these fractions, we get, um, we're, we're multiplying just to be clear, four thirds times four fifths. So that gives you 16 over 15. And so now you have five times the square root of 16 over 15. And so that's the denominator. So now we could just divide. We already have a two in the, in the numerator. We have a five in the denominator. So we now have two over five. I'm going to put it up here. We now have 2 over 5 multiplied by the root of 5 thirds times 15 over 16. And when you multiply these, you have 2 fifths. And that looks like, there we go. Times. You're 25 over 16. And so in this case, you have two fifths times, well, the square root of 25 is five. The square root of 16 is four. So you have two fifths times five quarters, which gives you 10 out of 20, which reduces to a half. And that's how we got that. So hopefully that makes sense to everyone. And I hope this video was helpful. Uh, tomorrow Sunday, for those of you who are new to the channel, tomorrow Sunday, I will give you my uh, the, the moral, the Sunday moral Christian message.